All right, painting trees, let's jump on in. The first thing I wanna talk about is the shape and the form of the tree. This is the first thing you're gonna do. You're gonna to wanna to draw out your tree. And I feel like a lot of people do this wrong because they're not thinking about the big shapes. When you're looking at a tree and you wanna start and first draw it, don't think of it as a tree, really. Don't think of it as branches with all these individual leaves and other branches and twigs and all that stuff. You want to squint your eyes and just see it as one big shape you're going to see here when i draw my tree i'm not worrying about carving out each individual leaves or little gaps in the trees little sky holes i'm not going to do that yet i want to think of the tree and all of its leaves as just one solid shape like if it was just a a big mass of clay or something because i will have time later on to go back in and and, and suggest leaves and put sky holes and and cut the edges and do all that fun stuff and actually make it look like a tree but right now i need to get that main shape so i can construct the proper form now how do you construct the proper form of the tree again you got to be thinking of it as one big mass and just like you would paint a still life like if you just had an apple and you're painting an apple you have a light source it's going to have light hitting one side other side's going to have shadow same thing goes for the tree i think the best thing i can tell you in this video is is get the idea of individual leaves out of your mind at least for you know the first portion of painting the tree and think of it like you would just think painting an apple and it's like all right i got this sunlight coming hitting one side of the tree which is going to be light and the side that's not hitting it is going to be in shadow and this idea of being aware of the light and shadow is something that I want you to keep in your mind the entire time you're painting. Because as we go on, we're going to be working smaller and smaller shapes. But I still always want to be aware of that and make sure I'm always adhering to that form. With trees, it's very easy to lose sight of that. And then you get to the end, your tree doesn't really have any form. It doesn't seem three dimensional. It just seems flat and it's just like a bunch of splatters of color. You can see here in the bad example that there's no real shape or form here. There's no consistency with the shadows and the highlights. It's all kind of sporadic and you can't tell where the light source is coming from because the big general form of the tree and the shapes of the light and shadow were not established at the beginning. I'm gonna be honest, this is a hard thing to do with trees because it's so easy to get caught up in all the different leaves and you're looking at all these leaves and you're seeing darks and your lights and you're trying to fit in every darks and light that you see and you step back and it's like, oh, this nothing's really reading here. Like I can't tell where the light source is coming from. It's just kind of a mess of darks and lights and you keep that from happening from starting simple thinking big and then we'll slowly get smaller and smaller and smaller so if you've been enjoying this video so far and you've gotten some value out of it please hit the like button subscribe to the channel it really helps the channel grow if you're digging my approach to oil painting you'll probably like my foundations of oil painting course which i'm releasing in january and if you don't want to miss out on when i release that at a discounted price sign up for the paint coach newsletter also in the description below all right, back to the magic. Okay, let's talk about leaves. You can see here in the bad example, I painted the leaves with that kind of Bob Ross dab in the brush method. I find it interesting how many people's first approach to landscape painting is kind of the Bob Ross method, which is fine. I loved Bob Ross. I was growing up, I loved watching him paint. I thought it was awesome. But if I'm gonna be honest, his method of painting is very specific to a formula that he has. And in my opinion, that formula of painting can be very limited in the long run. So if you like doing that, that's totally cool. But for this, I'm not going to be, you know, dabbing the brush to make the leaves. I'm actually not even gonna be thinking about painting individual leaves just yet. I'm gonna try and identify the major clumps and shapes of leaves that I see. Now, when you're doing this, try hard not to make all your clumps and shapes of leaves the same size and close to the same shape. Our brains just naturally wanna make things symmetrical. But squint your eyes and try and pull out the main big shapes that you see. And when you're painting these shapes, just as we're keeping in mind the shape and the form and the light and shadow on the tree as a whole, you're gonna to wanna to continue to do that with these chunks of leaves. Because these chunks of leaves are shapes in themselves. They have their own form. They have a light side, they have a shadow side, and you want that form to be reading. And I feel like with doing this, it's always good to connect shapes when you can. I actually had to go back 
in my painting here and adjusting and connect some shapes. I started separating these chunks of leaves too much. And when you join these shapes together, it just looks better. It, it, it reads better. It's so easy to get caught up in details and wanting to get all the, every little chunk of leaves. But just sometimes when you combine these shapes and you, and you just have good solid connecting shapes, it's just gonna read a lot better. Now, another very important thing to be aware of is when there's other trees around this tree, because a lot of times if you're painting a tree, there's probably going to be other trees around it. And a big mistake I see people make is that they have their, their trees and, and you can't separate trees from other trees or trees that are in the distance opposed to trees that are in the foreground. So in this one, I have trees that are in the background and you can see in the bad example here that these trees are pretty much the same color and value as the tree in the foreground. Therefore, they're pretty much competing with this tree in the front. There's no sense of depth here. In order to create depth, you need to be aware of atmospheric perspective, which is the idea that as things get further away from you, certain colors drop out. First is yellows and then reds and you're left with blues. So in general, things are gonna get cooler as they get further away. So all these warm colors that I have in this tree here, I'm just gonna knock them back a bit. My yellows aren't gonna be as yellow, they're gonna be more reds. My reds aren't gonna be as red, they're gonna be kind of more blues. I'm gonna add a little bit of white into it, desaturate a little bit, and this desaturated cool down version of these colors is gonna sit these trees behind it, which is where I want. I'm also gonna paint these trees a lot simpler with less detail. Less detail is also gonna sit it behind this tree. You know, these trees in the background aren't the main focus. The main focus is the tree in the foreground. So I'm gonna save my detail for that. Now seeing the change in colors and atmospheric perspective isn't always gonna be very clear in a photo. When it comes to landscapes, photos can be unreliable in certain ways. And one of those ways is atmospheric perspective. It's kind of hard to see uh, these subtle changes in colors. So be aware of this and kind of push it more than maybe you see in the photo. Remember, you're not a copier, you're not a printer, you're not here to copy a photo exactly. You're an artist, you need to make decisions. You need to change things to make a better painting. So as I'm developing these chunks of leaves, I'm working smaller and smaller and smaller. I also like to work dark to light, but something to be aware of with trees in terms of the lighter values is don't make them too bright. I find that it's very easy for people to push the lights too bright because they're seeing them compared to the darks of the tree and they seem really bright compared to the darks. But if you step back and you look at your tree as a whole, even the lights and the darks in the tree are going to be contained in a certain value range. Because remember with a landscape, most of the time your sky is going to be your lightest value, followed by your ground plane, and then these slanted planes like mountains are going to be a little bit darker, and your darkest objects are going to be upright objects like trees, houses, people, things like that. So even in the highlights of the trees, they should still be somewhat dark and relative to the rest of the painting. Most of the time they should be darker than your ground. Now, yes, there are exceptions with this rule. This is just something to keep an eye out for. All right, now it's time to put in the sky and these sky holes. You can see here in the bad example, the sky holes aren't as crisp and clean because when you put in these sky holes, when you have this clean sky color that you wanna keep clean, make sure that you clean your brush anytime your brush goes into the color of the tree. So you might paint a sky hole and your brush will run into the color of the tree. You know, you, you clean it in your paint thinner, wipe it on your paper towel, get some clean sky paint on your brush and make another one. Here in the bad example, you can tell that I just kept making marks without cleaning my brush and these sky holes are pretty dirty. All right, now let's talk about edges because that's very important with the tree because we're talking about leaves here. And this is a big way of how you're gonna suggest leaves. You know, all these leaves, it's not one solid shape. Even though we thought of it that way in the beginning, now it's time to make it be reading as leaves. These are a bunch of individual leaves moving. So it's good to soften some of the edges of your tree and some of the sky holes as well. If all the edges are very crisp and strong, it's going to read a little too artificial. Okay. So one of the last things that I do is I go in with a small brush and I pick and I choose certain areas to put individual leaves. I don't do it absolutely everywhere. I pick and I choose, maybe make some stray leaves on the outside. I do as much as I feel is necessary to suggest the amount of leaves that I want.
All right, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to sign up for the Paint Coach newsletter. The link is in the description below. If you want to see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Hey, I got a favor to ask. Can you please hit that subscribe button? Also, I got another video for you right here.